Okay, we were hoping to beam a few um, slides up, but uh, we haven't quite got the right connection, so uh, it's not critical. Uh, today is a, tonight is a, a public meeting, as you know, for debate. It's primarily for you to ask questions, us to debate uh, anything that comes up, so this is not uh, for us to present anything to you necessarily. Um, the applicant, Philip Holbrook, is here as well, and uh, I think uh, you all know... And Richard. And Richard is and here Rob. as well, and uh, young Mr. Holbrook. Rob, is it right? So, um, it's, uh, we have organised this as a public meeting, uh, primarily on behalf of, of us guys who are objecting, but of course it is an open public meeting. So. Uh, we don't have a strict agenda. Tracy will uh, start us off, and uh, as I say, it's primarily about getting you uh, debating the issues, asking questions. Where are we within the process as it uh, starts off for a second time, etc. So, once we get going, then please uh, let's just have uh, a little bit of um, discipline in uh, ans asking questions and answering questions. I've got a microphone here, or if you're happy to stand up and, and talk reasonably loudly, it would be okay. But uh, if we can do it in a reasonably disciplined way, then that would be best for everyone, I think. So uh, I'll sit down and let Tracy uh, start us off. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, as Martin said, the, the main focus this evening is to allow yourselves to ask questions of us, of the applicants, whatever you feel you wish to air to the group. Um, this is the only opportunity that the community has to actually debate this with no time constraints. Most committee meetings, etc., have either a three or five minute uh, restriction for both applicants and objectors. It's the same rule. Um, and that is very difficult when it's such a a sensitive issue and people have quite strong opinions one way or the other. Um, last time we had this public meeting I think it was a good opportunity for people to ask questions. Uh, significant information came out. Um, unfortunately we weren't able to ask questions but I believe the Holbrooks are willing to answer some questions tonight. Um, so if you feel you would like to do that then we'll have a Q&A session as we move through the programme. Okay, so what I'd like to do is just to briefly say what we've been doing, uh, why we felt motivated to do it. Um, as Martin said, we live in Tyrrell's Barn, one of the four converted barns in Chances Pitch. Uh, there are a number of other residents here, uh, Lynn and Patrick, etc., very close, uh, and Hilary and Paul, all dramatically impacted by this proposal. There are others in the audience from, I don't know if anybody's here from Ledbury, um, who have serious concerns about the traffic implications, among other things, and that's been a very strong focus this time round um, on the objections from certainly the information I've been receiving. Now, this is not a personal campaign against the Holbrooks, whatever they may think, it isn't. It's, you know, my role has been purely to coordinate a voice for you all. You know, it's very easy to think that someone else is doing something. Most of the time they're not. They're relying on someone else. And that's what I've stood up to do. And on the whole, I think it's been an effective campaign. There have been accusations flying around left, right and centre. Most of them are unfounded. But that's the nature of campaigning. You know, that's what we have to take on the chin. Um, there are a number of people in the room that feel very passionately about this and have been using their own time to distribute leaflets, stand in Ledbury High Street, talk to people in the village, etc. So it's not just us. Even though I'm standing here, it genuinely is not just about me. Okay, I want to get that across very clearly. So, what have we been doing? As you're all probably aware, we, we're trying our hardest to get a public campaign up and running again. We were very successful in a very short period of time last time, and we've managed to uh, continue that. Um, I'm in communications with various people. Um, obviously I'm going to keep most of that to myself for obvious reasons today, but rest assured we are doing things in the background to help secure what we hope will be a rejection outright of this application. Okay. So, just as an example of public feeling and how little public awareness there is of this, you'll be surprised. I mean, you've turned up today because probably either you 
have heard about it or you've seen a leaflet. And that was the main purpose of the leaflet drop, was to raise public awareness. Regardless of what you think about it, what your views are, you need to be aware of it. And that was the key. <coughs> so, in less than three hours in Ledbury High Street, we collected over 100 signed objections. These were not forced on anybody. All we did was made them aware of the campaign. They immediately signed the document. So that's just to give you an indication of how strong the feeling is. For different reasons, granted, but genuine opposition. <coughs> the other thing we've been doing, obviously, a number of the key bodies are consultees in the application, such as uh, Morven Hills ANOB, um, the Environment Ag Agency, uh, we can't talk to them while this application is in progress, obviously, because they're consultees. A number of them would have liked to have been here this evening, but for that very reason, it's not appropriate that they're here or they communicate anything while this process is going on. That can be a little bit frustrating, because if you're objecting to something, the first you hear of it is when an application is either about to, to land or has landed, which is the case with this one too. So the other thing, as a lot of you may be aware, there are... A significant number of broiler applications in Herefordshire and Worcestershire. This application, uh, when it was advertised in Hereford Times, there were five other applications at the same time. That's a significant number of broiler units, regardless of what you feel about them. There is a, a need from Herefordshire Council to actually take that into account, to consider the cumulative effect across the county, as well as where they're located. That is a serious planning consideration and will be taken into consideration, I hope, because it certainly needs to be part of it. So I'm often asked, what can we object about? And we make a very clear point of not telling people what to object on. It's very personal objection. It needs to be your objection, not ours. There are some key things that obviously the planners will take into consideration, and they're the key Planning considerations such as traffic, odour, impact on the landscape, obviously because it's an ANOB, um, noise, dust, all the obvious things are persons to this application and you can object on those points. Uh, lack of value of our house, a decrease in value of our house for example is not relevant. However passionately we feel about that, it's not relevant. And I know a number of the other neighbours do too. Um, so we have to take that into account. However, if you feel strongly and it's an emotional objection, it's still, it still can go on. But just take that point. Even though there are huge volumes of objections going on and support, it, some of it is completely disregarded by the planners. And that's a very important point for everyone to understand. But there will be one objection that will say the right thing. And that's the one that will be taken into account and acted upon. As we've seen with the request for a transportation statement, uh, that the applicants, applicants now have to fulfil. That's encouraging from our point of view because I don't know if anyone else in the room will agree, the last time it felt a little bit like it was being railroaded through. That's not the sense this time. So that's a good, that means the process is working. Okay. The other thing I'd like to say is there's a lot of talk about the need for chicken and we kind of have to touch on this a little bit um, because there is, whatever you think of it, there is a national need for chicken. That's not a planning consideration here. The planning consideration is, is it the right location for such an uh, industrial process? That's important, not whether this farm, this site has to produce chicken in order to meet the national need. There are many other applications that fulfil that need, potentially, and that's up to the planners to consider. I have one thing I wanted to put up and not read out, but I will read out because I can't spread, is I've came across a statement from a joint partnership between the ANOB, its national body, and English Heritage, which is now Historic England, Change the name for some reason. I thought I'd read it out. So the purpose of the statement, the historic environment is a key component of the character of today's world and a physical record of what our countries are and how they came to be. It represents the investment of centuries of skills, resources and cultural influences that can never be replaced. 
It explains the development of the landscape and gives each place its distinctive character and sense of place. It is valuable for its own sake, but also generates jobs and attracts people to live in an area. It encourages businesses to invest and tourists to visit. It is a resource that we need to use carefully and sustainably. We lose or degrade it at our peril. And I think that really kind of sums up the situation we're in. Okay? I, I, I'm sure a lot of you will agree with that. But that is a very important point. The value of the ANOB cannot be underestimated. And this particular application, I think, is really in the firing line for that particular concern. It is a very difficult one to overcome, and as was proved last time with the withdrawal. Whether they've overcome it this time, I really don't think so. Looking at the application, I don't feel it's really significantly changed, in my opinion. And in fact, some of the reports haven't changed at all, uh, which is of concern. So what I'd like to do now, I don't want to be up here talking all the time. What I'd like to do is open it up for people to ask questions, to make points. Uh, one thing I would like to say that we will make a note of any, what we consider to be key points that are important that we've missed. There was uh, something that came out last night at the Cole Parish Council meeting around biomass boiler and uh, borehole concerns and a few things like that. Um, and it, I don't know if anybody here doesn't know, but the Parish Council did object again this time to this application. So that's another one down. Um, the other thing I'd like to say as well, Ledbury Council are holding their planning meeting on the 17th of September. And I believe there's going to be a specific meeting, something like a week before, where we can all debate. I'm hoping in a forum like this, um, which is going to be led, I believe, by Liz, Liz Harvey, um, determined to get the two sides together so we can actually have a proper debate outside of the restrictions of committee. I think that's a really good thing um, and I'm hoping a, a lot of people from Ledbury will attend. It's been quite difficult to try and coordinate lots of different meetings for lots of different people. Um, so that is going on. on. When we know the date, we'll obviously send that message out. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to ask the whole if they feel that they, uh, whether or not there's a responsibility on them, on their shoulders to make sure that statement, we weren't allowed to question that statement, you wouldn't take any questions and answers, so you were able to sit, listen to the whole debate and only put across your own point of view. You read out that statement last night, you were given that opportunity. We will give you that opportunity again tonight because this is a free and open public debate, but you've got to be prepared to take some questions yeah, and answers, we, 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 we just otherwise you're just hijacking a meeting for the sake of your own statement. Do you, do you feel you are um, a custodian of the land that you own for future generations? And if so, how can, how can you sort of, um, I suppose, bring that to bear with, with this current application? Um, and, you know, what it will, the implications of the application, if it is approved, going forward for future generations? Because planting of trees and, and surrounding um, Landscaping is is a, a life cycle of a tree. Um, what you're proposing is going to be permanent going forward for the potential generations. So, could you give some thoughts to that? Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Let's have. Could I just say, excuse me, excuse me, could I just say, excuse me, could I just say, it is totally irrelevant how much land they own. A perfectly fair question is, how many acres do they farm? Okay, let's, uh, while we're here at this point, let's just establish that I'll act as the chairman of this meeting, and let's just try and have a bit of discipline. Otherwise, it degenerates into a cat call and, and uh, we won't get anywhere. So, 
if there's a question put to this gentleman, let him answer it. I don't, it doesn't really need you to say he can't answer it. He will say that himself if he believes the case. Sorry, are you still talking to me then? Yes, I am. Oh, yes. okay, fine. So if I didn't ask a question, what I've got my land on? Yeah, it'd be useful, yeah. Okay. Thanks. If you, if you have significant land holding, why does this have to be yes. in the yes. That is the point, I guess. The hundred people who signed up in Ledbury High Street, what did they sign for? How can you go down the street? They signed for a whole bunch of... Uh, let them out. 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 I don't know how they signed for something. They didn't. So, so just yeah, sex. I'm from Ledbury, um, so I'm not from Colwall. I'm an outsider, and I forgive. I hope you forgive me for coming in. I used to be a Ledbury town councillor. My name's Rich Hadley. People call me a troublemaker and a stirrer, including some of your family, actually, uh, Mr. Holbrook, as I understand it. But anyway, that's beside the point. The point is this: when I was at Ledbury town council, we had the first application come to us, and it was quite clear that on a whole range of compelling grounds. This would be a disaster for the area here and for Ledbury as a whole. And actually, it's got nothing to do with chicken and the availability of cheap chicken. Um, that, those aren't the issues. From a Ledbury perspective, the, there is huge opposition to this, and I can tell you why. People are extremely worried about the large, the heavy goods vehicles coming in concentrated cycles up New Street, mm -hmm. through the Top Cross, and round the corner into South End and down the Gloucester Road. It's a very, now we already have a terrible problem with traffic thundering through the ancient buildings and the narrow uh, medieval streets of Ledbury. Now, actually, this isn't, this might, you can prove lots of things with statistics, but 0.25% spread over the year sounds okay. But actually, this isn't like this because it's concentrated in, is it eight or ten cycles where we have dozens and dozens of vehicles running day and night through the town. And lots of people live in the centre of Ledbury. And this would constitute a terrible intrusion, not to say a degradation of our town. And we rely on tourism. So that was, that was really one of the primary reasons why people in Ledbury High Street are opposed to it. Okay? So that's the answer to that. And I speak as somebody who is involved in the community and talking to people. You only need to go on to the voice of Ledbury to see the strength of feeling there. And these are not tree-hugging, vegetarian people. They are not. Um, these are ordinary people who are concerned about the impact that this development would have on their town. So, um, the second issue that people are concerned about, and it's probably not a primary problem for Ledbury, but the odour, depending on the wind, the way the wind goes. Now, Liz Harvey, Councillor Liz Harvey, who is a good friend of mine, she's a county councillor in Ledbury, was sitting at the planning committee yesterday when the Morton on Lug broiler unit, the additional six sheds that were proposed there, was turned down yesterday by the planning committee comprehensively. On all kinds of grounds, but one of the really major points was the question of odour. The planning committee went to the broiler sheds at Morton on Luck, and even though it was mid-cycle, uh, they weren't mucking out, there was nothing going on, the stink, the stink coming out of those sheds was unbelievable. And that was on a day when everything was closed down and supposedly hermetically sealed. It was, it was like gag worthy to get up there. So when the shed doors are opened and all the rubbish is shoveled out and so on, um, this is magnified hugely and does constitute a huge problem for local people. And thirdly, the reason that Ledbury Town Council and Ledbury people are concerned, we are in the AONB in Ledbury. Tourism is our major industry in the town and we take our responsibilities as a town and a town council seriously. You talk about the custodians of the land. We are the custodians of the AONV in Malvern. This is a pristine landscape and we do not want an industrial facility in the middle of our pristine landscape. Of course farming is an industry and we support farming. Of course we do. What we don't want is this industrial factory farming facility plonked in the middle of our pristine landscape. So if you want to do it, 
take it away to somewhere where it's less environmentally sensitive. Take it somewhere where the roads can cope with the problem. Take it, God forbid, where pe some people will put up with the stink. Actually, I don't think many people would put up with the stink. Those are the reasons Ledbury is opposed to I'm quite wrong. Rob? I did. Is that I right? Was 
It's merely a comment. What worries me, amongst other things, is the precedent that um, would be set if yes. this is approved. What then is going to happen with the other farmers in the area? Because they'll see this as a green light. So it's not just one chicken factory we're fighting here. It's lots of chicken factories. And I, I just mentioned, you've said that there'll be reduced traffic movements because you won't have to import the chicken manure onto your farm for spreading. And yet you've just said that you will be storing it up to seven miles away. Yes. So how does it get there? Is it magic to work? <laughs> I think, which would we rather have? Potatoes being grown? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Or an industrial chicken facility? But anyway, that's, that's not a planning consideration. That's your choice as farmers, but don't try and tell us we'd rather have chickens than potatoes. We don't mind potatoes. They only come uh, in October um, for a couple of weeks, uh, like the apple harvest, we put up with it and it's absolutely great. But this is a year-round operation. So that's a, but look, there's another thing. In the Ledbury report, Gary Bills Geddes uh, has just put an item in there saying that you... Won't all your chicken manure is going to be stored on the farm in in Coldwall. There will be no, you know, that the manure isn't going to be emanating outwards. Where did he get that? Did he, did, has he made a mistake with that store? 
Oh, it was in, it's on Labour Report uh, okay. website just now, uh, a couple of days ago, and it's saying, good news, you know, there's not going to be any manure movements out of the farm, you know, unlike the previous application. It's all going to be contained on the farm. Of course, what people are worried about is the fact that you're going to be spreading that manure on the farm throughout the year. So it's going to be stinking. At the moment, we have muck spreading time, and it does stink. And there's flies, and, and sometimes it's pretty nasty, but we put up with it. In answer to the gentleman's question, I can tell you exactly where that information came from because I asked the question of the planners, and Mr. Pitt, the agent, came back and said, I can assure you that the manure will stay on that immediate site. Now that's Mr. Pitt's answer. Could I make a point about the traffic going through Ledbury? I have the misfortune to live in New Street and your tractors with potatoes change gear as they pass my premises. Uh, it is not always noisy, but some are noisier than others. I don't know if you have the opportunity to come into Ledbury during the day yourself. Uh, both of my neighbours have had prangs because there are now so many cars parked in Ledbury on both sides of New Street that if one of your tractors or any of your vehicles is coming up the road, uh, what will happen when you meet one of the articulated trucks coming from the co-op? There, there is just no spare room at the moment. It's either one car going up New Street or one car coming down. There is a real problem there. But don't blame that on the farmers. No, we're, we're saying that it's not appropriate for the vehicles to be using those narrow ancient streets. Well, does anyone know that the traffic issue is one that could be clarified for me a bit because we know there's a 0.05, not 0.25% increase in traffic, and that's without the reduction in the percentage of trailers. But I think what's important to everybody is the nature of the traffic. Um, does anyone know right now? how many heavy goods vehicles go through Ledbury. So what percentage of those would, would the new venture be contributing to? Right now in Ledbury, we have a real issue. There is actually a group, uh, meeting this evening in Ledbury on traffic management. We have, because the town is overloaded with heavy goods vehicles and large vehicles, buses, and uh, illegal movements up and down the south end because they don't come up New Street and so on. We've got a real problem, an increasing congestion. We've got physical degradation of the black and white buildings at Top Cross and New Street. We have lorries regularly smashing into the house on stilts, so much so that uh, it actually has been in danger of collapse. We have got a huge problem. One of the issues is about thinking about having a bypass uh, to extend the bypass round and take A449 out of Top Cross and South End. Because at the moment the traffic is unsustainable. Now, as I say, never mind about the whole Brooks and their chicken operation. What we're saying is we cannot and we do not want to tolerate any more traffic movements through Ledbury. We can't cope with it. You've heard what the lady said. She lives in there. I live on the Gloucester Road. Uh, I hear the heavy goods vehicles rumbling by in the middle of the night. Uh, it, I don't want any more of it. But the main thing is the scent that pinch points around Top Cross and New Street is unsustainable. And that's it. But nobody knows actually right now how many heavy goods vehicles go through. That was the question. What do you know? No, I'm asking. Oh, well, no, we don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, why would we know that? Just, why yes. would we know that? Well, because if it's a 0.05 increase in that's there, that's over the significant. year. Yeah, but that's because it's averaged out over the year, and that's a statistical yeah. trick. Actually, you've got spikes in the uh, density of traffic movements at eight points in the year, at so, particular points in the day and the night. Yeah, well, that's the operative thing. I so, that. so you're taking a median, but actually, no. you need to be taking a mean. Right now, I'm actually asking a question. Well, the, the, do, are you a statistician? Do you know the difference between median, mean, yes, and mode? Yes. Okay, well, that's so, what we're talking about. I understand that. Yeah. Okay, let's. Um, We've been sitting here for an hour, well you've been sitting here for about an hour and a quarter. I would suggest that if anybody who wants to ask a question or raise a point who hasn't already had a chance to speak, then please put your hand up and we'll hear.
Otherwise, we will start to wind this down. So, has anybody... Can yes. I just ask what's important about the date of the 14th of August, please? That's that, yeah, that's a good question, actually. We'll, we'll have an so, the date of 14th of August is when uh, representations that your objections or support, or wherever it may be, uh, can go uh, to the planner. Um, after that date, uh, anything that is sent via that vehicle to uh, Herefordshire will be considered, but they close the date off so that the planner can then begin the process of, of, of doing the case report uh, and preparing his, his decision one way or the other, whichever way it's going to go. So you have technically up until the decision point, the determination date, which I think on this one is the 5th of November, uh, the date, just, just to make a point, the date on the website, I believe it keeps flipping between 15th of October and 5th of November. Um, I've been told that that actually is a computer glitch and it is still 5th of November, which is the 16 week process, which is type of application. So can we send in, can anybody send me in objections or support? Yeah, but you, yes you can, and, but you have to take into account, obviously the planner's only going to look at the ones that he feels, or she feels are, appropriate to the application, and that's across the board. Is it more important to get it in by the 14th of August date, rather than after? I would suggest, I would suggest you know, there's no good time, there's no bad time, no. but I would suggest so that if you want to do something, I would suggest you do it. Now, and the yeah. planners would take account of something like that. And they will eventually to... appear on the website. They yes. are, they're a little bit behind and they were before. So we have a bit of an issue. Well, get a cut-off date of 14th of August. We can presume that we can... You can carry on with your objections. I'll take that further off the plan. Could you confirm that if you object before, you've got to object again? Yes, you do have to object again. In, from the planner's point of view, is, is considered to be a different application. So, uh, particularly people that uh, live close, you know, they're the sort of uh, objections that are really taken into account, more, probably more than the others, unless it's around a key uh, point of consideration, which obviously traffic would appear to be one, uh, Oda probably is one of the others, uh, certainly the LMB and landscape, those sorts of issues uh, will be the main ones, I suspect. Can I ask just one simple question? What is the legal status of the AOMP? It is a protected I mean, area. Is it ju just a, you know, a pretty ma a mark of a pretty place on the map? Or what? Is it, <laughs> is it, it, is, it is protected, um, and they are they're not a statutory body, which in <coughs> sorry, historic England are, I believe, um, and they have their own planning uh, process. So the weight of English heritage or historic England is, is more significant than the AOB. But obviously, if Herefordshire Council were to go against the OMB, then they would have to have very good reasons to do that. So it is, it is a, a viewpoint that's taken very, very seriously, obviously. Right. But it is, it is a legally protected. I mean, obviously, British Camp is undeniably a national heritage monument. So that has to be taken into account. Thanks very much for your time, and I hope you found it useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.